Here is your latest African news. Africa wide. African scientists slam CDC recommendation on Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Scientists and health advocates in Africa say they're deeply disappointed by a statement from the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention about the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. The CDC last week recommended the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines ahead of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine because of concerns that the Johnson & Johnson shot could in rare cases cause blood clots or thrombosis. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is one of the most widely used in Africa because it's a single-dose shot that doesn't require ultra-cold storage. The South African Health department has reassured people that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is safe. In a statement, the CDC said it was experiencing a clinical preference for other vaccines over Johnson & Johnson. The updated CDC recommendation follows similar recommendations from other countries including Canada and the United Kingdom, the CDC said. Still, the CDC has said that receiving any vaccine is better than being unvaccinated. Zimbabwe Zimbabwe wants to make a trade with the UK for Cecil Rhodes' remains. Zimbabwean President Emerson Mnangawa is pushing for the landmark return of colonial war trophies such as skulls of native leaders that were shipped to the UK and elsewhere in Europe in return of the remains of British colonist Cecil Rhodes, who is buried in the South African country. The call for the return of the Zimbabwean skulls comes after the country completed the historic creation of a statue of Mbuya Nehanda, a spirit medium and key liberation war figure in Zimbabwe's early fight for independence. It is believed that her head is among many other remains of chiefs and other traditional leaders who fought against colonial oppression and plunder that were taken to the UK. Kenya Kenya sent back a ship with radioactive waste to India. Kenya has stopped a cargo ship en route to Zanzibar loaded with radioactive materials saying the decision is within the international treaty to protect Africa from the import of harmful waste. Nairobi says ordering the ship to return the 20-feet container, which was detected emitting high radiation levels to India, was within the Bamako Convention, which prohibits the import into Africa of any hazardous material, including radioactive waste. The convention was adopted under the auspices of the Organization of African Unity in 1991, now the African Union, and came into force in 1998 and calls for the ban of the input into the continent and the control of transboundary movement and management of hazardous waste within Africa. Kenya Ports Authority Acting Head of Security Tony Kibwana said high standard operating procedures and modern scanning equipment helped the country to detect uranium substances in the 20-feet container on the ship. Mauritius Mauritius oil spill, captain guilty of a tanker spill. The captain and first officer of a ship that ran aground on coral reefs in Mauritius have been found guilty of endangering safe navigation. The captain admitted to drinking moderately during a birthday party on board before the MV Wakashio ran aground on July 25, 2020. About 1,000 tons of fuel leaked into the water, sparking an ecological emergency. Mauritius is home to world-renowned coral reefs and popular with tourists. The captain and his first officer were found guilty under the 2007 Merchant Ship Act by a court in the capital, Port Louise. The ship ran aground at Point Desney, a known sanctuary for rare wildlife. The pair are due to be sentenced on 27th December. Ghana Brawl in Ghana's parliament over proposed e-levy a massive brawl broke out in the Ghanaian parliament early in the week following a dispute over a proposed tax on electronic transactions. The skirmishes rocked the floor with some leaders seen throwing punches, ripping shirts and some throwing kicks at each other. The commotion led to the adjournment of the proceedings. The disagreement was further sparked by the absence of the speaker, Mr. Mr. Alban Bagdin, even as the House Finance Committee tabled the motion. The opposition members were irked when the deputy speaker stood to vote on the e-levy tax. Lawmakers from the two political divides Ashley debated on the 1.5% e-levy on all mobile, a bill that was proposed last month. The opposition members of parliament say the proposed levy will affect people of lower income who extensively rely on mobile transactions for their daily lives. A vote on whether to proceed with the urgency procedure will be debated again on January 18th. Nigeria President Buhari opposes a change in the electoral law. Nigeria's President Muhammadu Buhari has refused to approve an amendment to the electoral law which includes the organization of primaries to designate candidates for the presidential election scheduled in 14 months. According to President Buhari, the adoption of direct open primaries would significantly increase the cost and insecurity of monitoring elections, as well as marginalize small political parties. He said it would put additional pressure on the economy and security agencies of Africa's most populous country, which is already plagued with high inflation and insecurity. 
security. The amendment also calls for allowing electronic voting to facilitate the collection and transmission of results, thereby increasing the transparency of the elections. But in December 2018, Buhari had already refused to approve an amendment to the electoral law that sought to allow electronic voting in the upcoming presidential elections held two months later. Diaspora Anti-racist film Executive Order takes jury prize at the Rio Film Festival. Brazilian dystopia drama Executive Order Medida Provisoria took the jury's prize at the Rio International Film Festival. The film takes place in the near future in Brazil when an authoritarian government orders all Afro-Brazilian citizens to move to Africa. The film talks about the power of affection to transform the world of being affectionate, courageous and also the anti-racist struggle in Brazil. Director Lazarus Ramos says he hopes his film makes a difference in the fight against racism. Thanks for watching. Visit our YouTube channel Tunacheki to watch our daily news reports and our website tunacheki.tv for all the latest news updates. Also, don't forget to catch the return of our show, Africa in the News, on our channel. You can directly support this news series by becoming our YouTube member or becoming a Patreon. And remember, Africa is watching.